Okay. So, analogously to how we had flow over a cylinder in 2D, in 3D, the flow over a sphere is just a 3D doublet plus the uniform flow. So therefore, VR is minus V infinity. This is for the uniform flow. VR is negative V infinity cos theta. V theta is V infinity sine theta. And V phi is zero. So when we combine the two, We get that the radial velocity is negative v infinity minus mu over 2 pi r cubed times cos theta and v theta is v infinity plus mu over 4 pi r cubed sine theta and v phi. Zero. And we'll call this system of equations star, so we'll refer to it later. So, how do we know that this is the velocity field for the flow over a sphere? I mean, I've told you so, but you shouldn't just believe me. So, the way we can show this is to first look for the stagnation points. So we're looking for vr equals v theta equals zero. We don't need to worry about v phi because we know that's zero everywhere. So that's going to happen when sine theta equals zero. Which will happen at theta equals zero and phi. And then if we look at what we've got for VR, the VR equation, we're left with saying that, well, V infinity minus mu over 2 pi R cubed, big R now, is 0, where R equals R is the radial coordinate of the stagnation point. From this, we get that the radius is mu over 2 pi to infinity to the power of one third. So we've got two stagnation points on the z-axis where theta is zero at r equals r at theta equals zero and theta equals pi. So this is exactly what we had uh, for a cylinder in two dimensions. Now let's go a step further here and say, well, what now what happens if we put r equals r into the vr equation? Well, then we get that vr is negative v infinity minus mu over 2 pi r cubed cos theta. So putting in r equals r, we get since r is given by mu over 2 pi mu infinity to the one third, what we get is that vr is v infinity minus v infinity cos theta. Which is just zero. So vr equals zero. Uh, r equals r for all values of theta. So what this says is this is a flow tangency condition. This tells us that at this radius, which defines the surface of a sphere, the flow is tangent everywhere. So this is the flow tangency condition on the surface of a sphere, and therefore this potential flow defines the flow over a sphere. So now we can say that the set of equations star that we had uh, a couple of slides back um, are the velocity field for 
the incompressible flow. over sphere of radius r. So let's just sketch this out and then start seeing how this compares to what we got in 2D. So there's our cylinder or our sphere and Again, we get streamlines. That looks something like this. So qualitatively, this looks like the flow over a cylinder, but quantitatively, it's different. So if we look again at r equals r, and look at the tangential velocity, what we get is 3 halves the infinity sine theta. Now at the top and bottom of the sphere, where I theta is pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, we get the maximum velocity, which is 3 halves the infinity. Now recall when we were doing this in 2D and looking at a cylinder, we had Vmax on the cylinder was 2V infinity. So here is a really important observation that we're going to always have to keep in mind when we think about three-dimensional flows. In 3D, the ratio of Vmax to V infinity is reduced compared to in 2D. This happens because the flow over the sphere has ex an extra dimension in which to move around the body. Basically, it can get out of the way sideways instead of just going over and under it. So we call this three-dimensional relief. And it's a general finding for all 3D flows. So, once again, we've taken a simple example, just looking at flow over a sphere, and been able to show uh, this phenomenon of 3D relief, which is now something useful we can keep in mind looking at any three-dimensional object.